This video will go over the essential pillars required to becoming a fully fleshed out mature human being. It's worth noting that some of these traits are inherently masculine while others are inherently feminine, while others are non-gender specific traits but embodying other aspects of maturity that are important to cultivate. Here are the big seven personality traits that you must cultivate in order to create the most meaningful life possible. So right off the bat, the first trait I want to mention is the noble warrior spirit. You must become extremely hardworking and have the ability to work excruciating hours in order to achieve your goals and embody your passion, all while juggling a full-time job and other family obligations. And you must perceive failure as either a learning curve or not an option at all, because if you don't do this, you will fall into mediocrity and get an unfulfilling life just like the rest of humanity. The most obvious manifestation of the warrior spirit is of course hard work, but another manifestation would be learning how to fight. This is something I highly recommend for self-defense, and to really get the best out of this warrior trait. The best martial art I recommend for this would be wrestling. But boxing, Muay Thai, or Dutch kickboxing, or Kyokushin Karate would work well for this as well. So pick from one of those five, ideally. So it sounds like everything I've said so far would be the exact opposite of Generation Z, right? And yes, our society is truly shooting itself in the foot with the way that we're bringing them up. So as they get older and become leaders of society, they're going to have a very rude awakening. And the most important aspect to this is not complaining. Complaining weakens your willpower and makes you complacent. And not only that, excessive complaining also leads to developing mental health issues which can rob you of cognitive energy. Now moving on to the next trait, is assertiveness. This is important because you don't want people taking advantage of you and using you as a means to an end. And if you have a strong work ethic but don't set boundaries and standards, then you're unconsciously creating an open door policy to be exploited by others. Because there are low integrity people out there who seek the path of least resistance, who are not willing to put in the mahi to achieve their goals. So they seek out those with a good work ethic and are also dumb enough to let their guard down. So assertiveness is necessary to counteract people like this. It also shows that you're a high value person with integrity and people will naturally respect you for that. Assertiveness is also good for holding yourself and other people around you accountable for their actions and or mistakes. To make sure that you do better next time and don't make it a consistent pattern. Because it's important to not just work hard but also learn from your mistakes. And the last thing that I'll say about assertiveness is that it's great for not compromising on any principles that you hold. Whatever those might be for you. And the next quality is a sense of humour. This is just to take the edge off things, as being a better alternative to drugs and alcohol. Having a clever, witty sense of humour can cheer you up in the bleakest of circumstances, while remaining sober. It can also help you thrive in social environments if you're an introverted person. Having the ability to make anything sound funny is truly a gift not to be taken for granted. And if it's a gift you don't naturally have, don't worry. It can also be learnt, which I'll have an episode on in the future. And given the times that we're in now, with inflation, rising costs of living, crime on the rise, environmental chaos, shallow politics, job losses, people are more stressed than ever before, and a sense of humour is essential for well-being and mental stability's sake. Empathy and Compassion You must embrace love and understanding of people's misfortunes in life, which is not to say you absolutely have to resolve their situation. But it goes a long way to even just do something to cheer them up and brighten their dark day. Compassion gives you the ability to see something for what it is as opposed to how it can serve you. That's huge right there, to see that. It keeps you in touch with the human side of life by connecting with friends and family rather than just living like a soulless robot. And it completely burns away your desire to manipulate anything to make the circumstances align with what you want for yourself. If you go through life not being able to put yourself in other people's shoes and understand how their circumstances and upbringing shape who they are, then you will forever feel alienated and disconnected, and as a consequence, massively depressed. This also ensures that relationships have a good foundation built on trust and genuine love, rather than neediness and manipulation. Now before we move on, it's worth noting that compassion has both a masculine and a feminine dimension to it. Feminine compassion is what we might call compassion in the classic sense, where it's all about empathy and love and helping people with their needs. Then we have masculine compassion, which is more blunt and direct, where it takes more of a disciplined approach to help someone correct a bad habit that could result in their death or them ruining their life. Modesty. One must only let their accomplishments speak for themselves, rather than actively seeking the spotlight. 
This perfectly explains the difference between Conor McGregor and Khabib Nurmagomedov. Conor is obnoxious, arrogant, thinks highly of himself, and loves money, sponsorship deals, and bragging. For as Khabib is humble, kind, strong willed charitable, and lives like a minimalist, despite having lots of money. The guy prefers to dress like a substitute teacher, for as Connor loves his suits, watches, and tattoos. Modesty makes a person very non-materialistic, which is a great way to think, as it decreases stress significantly. And another good thing about being modest is you don't feel so inadequate about things you're not great at. Now these last two traits I'm going to cover up here are rather advanced, so you have a choice here. You can either click off now, or keep watching in case you're interested. Integrative Thinking you must become a holistic thinker and have the ability to build a worldview from pulling together a diverse range of sources and points of view, and to realize that any value that you hold, at the end of the day, does not derive from you internally, but from external stimuli, like books, TV, the internet, algorithms, family and social circle, rather than taking worldview and points of view as a given. This skill is more important than ever with the internet era we live in today. The world we live in now has created an epistemic mess as we search for meaning in the postmodern day and age. You have to search for the gold in each point of view while chucking out all the noise and self-deception. You must understand that there is value in science, religion, new age, and everything. In addition to integral thinking, you should also learn systems thinking, which is how to see the interconnectedness of everything. From there, it becomes easy to understand how cause and effect create both good and bad outcomes in the world. And last but not least, spirituality. This is the most important one of all. Experiencing enlightenment and experiencing all the different facets of awakening. Absolute love, absolute intelligence, no self, infinity, and God realization. And there's even more facets beyond that, that I don't have time to go into here. Spirituality reminds us all that at the end of the day, life is just a mere dream. But to not play the dream out smartly would be a mistake, as karma from action does carry over into your next lifetime. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you have learned much from watching this. I'll have more content like this coming in the future. Thank you all, I'm signing off. Please like and hit the bell notification.